my name is Steve Tumlin. Uh, I'm teaching welding classes for the Forge here in Greensboro. The, ideal is to, the idea is to build a reasonable proficiency at welding where people can make what they want uh, without their stuff actually killing anybody or them getting fried or blind or hurt in the process. It is a, rel a pretty inexpensive class. It's uh, 50 bucks uh, for the class. You need to bring your own shield. Northern Tools will sell you one for $17.95, seven days a week. Uh, cheap set of uh, welding gloves, and they need to be welding gloves. Uh, those run anywhere from five to uh, five to nine dollars, depending on where you get them. Bring a roll of wire, uh, welding wire. Uh, 0.030 flux core or 0.030 MIG wire. By the end of the course, you should be able to lay, uh, lay a bead in the flat and in, and horizontally. Uh, if you move along quickly enough, I can get you welding left to right and right to left because you can't always get to everything you know, going the other way. Uh, a little faster yet, we can get you front to back, back to front. Um, also offering an intermediate classes that, uh, to get you a little bit of overhead, uh, overhead welding and some vertical, uh, vertical downhill and uphill. Uh, and that covers the basic positions um, for most stuff. Uh, not doing pipe welding, not doing certification at this point, just trying to build proficiency. Um, let me see. Classes are on three, set of three succeeding Saturdays. If your schedule is not able to accommodate that, I generally have been able to pe accommodate people that have had to miss weeks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, if you're going to make it out of metal, at some point you're going to need to uh, you're going to need to uh, learn how to weld. Uh, it's not only handy for uh, joining metal pieces together, but you can also do perverse things like add metal in places that you'd have difficult. You can extend a piece of metal by welding, which can be complicated if you don't do that. You can resurface things and so on and so forth, as well as the usual, I have a hole in this and it does not need to be here uh, kind of thing. So anyway, uh, through the forge here in Greensboro, North Carolina on Lewis Street, uh, at this point classes are on Bain Street most Saturdays at 3 in the afternoon. Thank you. My name is Billy Jones, and I'm here today promoting Bessemer Aquaponics, uh, an attempt to bring a uh, the nation's first aquaponics school to Greensboro, uh, hopefully to eliminate the food deserts and provide some employment. Uh, bring a new technology, make Greensboro the uh, uh, world center of aquaponics, uh, put us to work, and uh, you know, tur turn the city around. Uh, living in one of those food deserts and watching people out of work. It's a struggle. You know, it's early, and it's really, a lot of it's way over my head, and I've never done anything like this before, so I'm just uh, kind of finding my way in the dark. Well, they've presented me with an audience of people that uh, just might be willing to help, so that's, that's a start. I'm Charlie Ward, and uh, um, the name of my company is Piedmont Woodworks. Uh, I am a musician, and I love the blues. I love Piedmont blues. And uh, so the instruments that I uh, produce both are used, or can be used in Piedmont blues. This uh, guitar looks like a cigar box guitar, but it really isn't a cigar box. 
This is a solid body guitar, uh, similar to a, a, a Fender guitar. And in fact, I call this guitar a stogie caster rather than a Telecaster or a Stratocaster. It's a good one pickup instrument that I've designed and tried to make the, the best I can using everything I know about guitar construction and, and building and playing that I've learned over the last uh, 40 years. Uh, it's got a single good pickup, a good solid poplar body which has a nice ring to it, and just one, one control, and that's a volume control. And what happens is every guitarist who picks it up makes it sound like them because there's no bells and whistles and such. So the soul, the, the, the real feel of the individual guitarist comes through. And every guitar player who I've ever had uh, pick this thing up has gone, wow, I love it. And it is uh, what I call the soul of the Piedmont, soul Piedmont blues. Now the other instrument that I, that I have here is uh, called a cajon. And it is a box. The um, story of these, of course, is that uh, in the New World, uh, back in the bad old days, African slaves were not allowed to play drums because talking drums, of course, are an instrument in Africa and the slave owners did not want them to be able to communicate. So in Peru, uh, some of the African slaves started to beat on shipping crates and boxes, and they uh, got such a variety of tones and rhythms out of it that they named it cajon, and they started to, uh, uh, to actually make it a musical instrument. The Spanish heard it. They loved it. They took it back to Spain. They put guitar strings in it, and they uh, used it in flamenco music. It's uh, been a part of flamenco for... Uh, many years. So it's pick, they're picking up uh, popularity again today in the United States. People use them to accompany softer kind of, you know, um, acoustic music when they don't want a full drum kit. And then sometimes people put uh, uh, microphones on them and really get, get, get a big sound out of it. I'm doing uh, these two. This is made of spalted maple, which is a good North Carolina Piedmont kind of wood. Uh, a lot of guitar makers don't like it because it doesn't have that kind of ringing tone, but it is perfect for this kind of instrument. And so again, my name's Carl Ward, Carl Ward. The company is Piedmont Woodwork, and what I'm trying to do is capture the soul of the Piedmont blues in this particular instrument. Well, at my age, there are some people who would say I am history. <laughs> um, uh, I've, uh, I've um, loved the blues for a long time, uh, and uh, I've always felt a responsibility to try to keep things moving forward, keep things going, and there's, in, in some ways, maybe there's more to it than just playing. Um, I, I, unfortunately, I had a bit of an accident a few months uh, back, and I, I, I cut a finger, so I, I don't play uh, quite as well as I used to. I'm going to get back, but not playing has really helped me focus on some other things, uh, and and um, I'm, I'm looking uh, at, at things a little differently now. How can I uh, help the music maybe in some ways that I hadn't been planning to do? I, I built this guitar really for myself, but as I have uh, played it around, people have gone, wow, how can I get one? I was like, well, you know, I can make you one. You know, and the same thing, I used to be a theater teacher, and I started out building these cajones for kids in uh, my classes uh, so that I would beat out rhythms for them to dance to and move to. And uh, again, people kept going, wow, that's wonderful. How can I get one of those? And, and I started to build and sell them. Thank you so much. Thank you. My name is Brendan Younger. Um, today at the pitch, I pitched an idea to help alleviate the problem we have in Greensboro of food deserts. Specifically, there are a lot of places in Greensboro that 
Um, there simply are no nearby grocery stores, which means that the local residents have to drive several miles, or if they don't have a car, they have to take the bus several miles to the nearest grocery store. And that becomes a real problem because a lot of these places are places where not a lot of people have cars or ready access to, to a car. I guess my pitch was really that not only should we have sort of a mobile grocery delivery that's local to Greensboro, but that it would be extremely economically viable. Um, you could do it simply from the SNAP benefits that are uh, currently being allocated to the people in, in these regions, and you could make enough profit off of this to pay a decent salary, we're talking 50, 60,000 a year, to somebody who's going to make deliveries to say up to 100 different uh, um, households in one of these regions. And so I guess my point here was that we could build a business here in Greensboro, homegrown one, that could support a few different delivery trucks delivering to different places, and it could be a viable ongoing business without having to rely much, if at all, on ongoing uh, charity or grants from uh, the government or other charitable organizations. So I guess my point really was that somebody should do this um, and that it, it could be a, a really good thing for our community going forward. Not so much along those lines. I'm assuming here that th there are a couple of assumptions baked in. When one is that if somebody would sign up for this mobile delivery, they would sign up to get a delivery every single week. So you wouldn't have as much of an issue with, oh, today I have to hit these 30 different households and they're all scattered across the, the city. Um, if you had, say, a, a core group of people who are going to be getting uh, a delivery every single week, you could map out that route very uh, efficiently and be able to deliver up to 20, 30, 40 deliveries per day. Um, and that would be sort of necessary to make this work. To be honest, my pitch was actually that somebody should do this, uh, possibly not me. Um, I, I'd be interested in helping out. My skills are more in the technical side of things, so one, one of the things that I was talking about with other people that I might do is set up a system where you could text an order and then the, you would get a text back telling you, you know, your order's been placed, we've scheduled you for this time and this day, and all of that being sort of an automated system that we could essentially give to whatever uh, nonprofit or startup that wanted to do this so that they wouldn't have to worry so much about the logistics end of things. They could focus more on the uh, procuring the, the, the wholesale food and delivering it. What I was really sort of pitching today was this idea that you wouldn't need as much community backing and, non and uh, foundation grant uh, backing and grants as you might believe to get something like this off the ground. It could be a ongoing um, self-supporting nonprofit enterprise that employed people for, for real salaries. So I guess that's that's where I was going with all this and I, I hope that somebody gets inspired by this and maybe has a little a few more means, a little bit more means and a few more connections than I do uh, to get this rolling. So all right, thank you. Uh, I'm Jeff Register. Uh, I'm a high school science teacher. And then I'm uh, also an officer here at the Forge. Uh, well, I got involved way before we even had a, had a space. Um, and it's something that um, I have, uh, it's something that uh, I wanted. I wish Greensboro had a maker space where uh, not only I would have access to tools that I don't in my, my little shop at, ha at, uh, at home, but uh, also there would be other people, like-minded folks, who like creating things. And uh, so when I met Joey and he was planning on starting this up, uh, I enthusiastically joined in the effort. Well, uh, in my classes, uh, I try to make my classes very hands-on. The, the forge itself is, is really an adult uh, space uh, for liability reasons, if no other reason. Um, but in terms of my classes, you know, I have I have lots of tools in my classroom, and uh, and I put them to various kinds of projects, uh, some of which are my ideas, some of which are their ideas, 
And uh, for instance, right now I have a, uh, a couple students and we're making a, uh, a planetarium. So we have a, a large geodesic dome in, a, in a, an available room and we're currently sewing the fabric to make a hemispherical screen and have a projector. And so we're looking forward to putting this uh, planetarium and immersive theater, uh, making that available uh, for astronomy lessons. I have an astronomy class. Uh, another teacher teaches an astronomy class. And then uh, in immersive environments for, for history classes, for instance, or foreign language classes. Uh, no, I think I was, I was already, <laughs> not really, <laughs> I was already pretty hands-on in, uh, in class, but uh, what has been great about The Forge is that I've gotten to meet a lot of people um, that I otherwise would not have gotten to meet. So, you know, my friends are other teachers or other scientists, and the, uh, but through The Forge, I've gotten to meet folks who are, uh, you know, welders or business people or entrepreneurs, um, folks from all parts of the Greensboro community that uh, otherwise I wouldn't have really come into contact with. So it's, it's been great for that. Well, I, 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 I feel a need to always be hands-on and creating things. And so, yeah, I would say that's, that's part of my makeup and, and really is kind of the, the profile of people who come out here to the forge is, is a need to create things and uh, not just to be a consumer of things, but, be, but to be a creator of things. Well, we're already starting. Thank you so much. Okay, sure thing. Well, my name is Joey Adams. Uh, I am founder and uh, president of the forge. Mostly we just wanted a place like this uh, to exist in Greensboro. Um, at the time, I guess it was early 2013, I had looked online to see if a space like this existed in Greensboro and there wasn't one. Uh, so I put out word online to see if anyone else was interested. And about a month later, a, a guy got in touch with me and we agreed to meet at a coffee shop uh, to set up a website and kind of form the business entity and started meeting on the first and third Thursdays of the month. Uh, and then after that, you know, next time we met, uh, we had a couple more people show up. And then after that, we had like five more people show up and then 10 and then 20 and then 30. And during that time, uh, we started uh, forming kind of like the bylaws and kind of what kind of organization we wanted it to be. We wanted it to be focused on like woodworking and metalworking and, and physical, you know, making and creation. Or did, did we want it to be more on the virtual side of things with software and electronics. And we found out that we had a big interest in both. So that's kind of what we've, we've made the space focus on. Um, we've had it, we, the space is split into two parts. Uh, the workshop space where we have the, the woodworking and the metalworking and the, the laser cutters and things like that. And then we have what's called the soft space uh, where we have the, the 3D printer and some of our sewing equipment and electronics workbench. Uh, we also have a small model uh, server room uh, where we have IT guys that work on that kind of thing as well. Uh, and then we also have a full AV system where people can uh, give presentations or just watch YouTube videos. Pretty much, yeah. Um, but it's, so there's a, it focuses on a, a few different varieties of, of interests uh, in terms of what people want to do with it. You've got your, your hobbyists that just want to come in and tinker. Um, you've got people that want to uh, start businesses uh, who are looking for maybe entrepreneurial support or want to tap into the, the social network that we have going on here. Um, and then you have people that are just you know, already established and are just looking for a, a place to kind of run their business. Uh, and all of those folks tend to work together and uh, help support each other. To an extent, uh, if anything, my biggest project, you know, people ask me what my project is, and my project is The Forge. Um, so it's, it's helped me. I've learned a lot about, you know, running an organization like this and, uh, you know, managing volunteers. And, uh, you know, we're up to about 150 members now. Uh, so that's always becoming a, a never-increasing uh, administrative uh, thing as well. Uh, so but it's been great. It's been a challenge, and uh, we're, we're still growing. So. So we've got a, a wide variety. I mean, we have some, some entrepreneurs. We have some uh, local people that are uh, uh, 
uh, run local nonprofits, uh, school teachers, um, you know, local professors. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty pretty good diverse group, uh, and it kind of mirrors our membership too as well. You know, we want the the membership of the the forge uh, to mirror the diversity in the community. So you've got you know all ages, all races, all genders, and all interests as well. Uh, everything from high school students up through graduate students, high school teachers up to college professors, uh, engineers of all stripes, uh, artists and uh, people that are interested in like lighting and sound and theater, uh, local scientists. I mean, it's it's the entire spectrum. So. Yeah, pretty much. It's uh, that's the the one. There's a whole lot of things in the community that that we find to divide ourselves. But here we want to come together with the, the common theme of, of building and creating and making. Based on the successes of some other uh, organizations like this around the country, you know, right now we're at about uh, 3,500 square feet. Uh, we could easily use up to 30 to 40,000 square foot, um, you know, five to six employees uh, and space for, for lots and lots of folks. So and I think the, the community can support that. Um, right now, we're just focusing on, on Greensboro and making sure that we're doing as good of a job as we can right now. So. Yeah, thank you. I'm Joel Leonard. I'm the uh, community developer here at the Forge. And the Forge, as you know, is a maker space, and uh, we're quite honored and and. Uh, a lot of people are coming into the forge and, and developing new approaches of making things. And this is a, a project that is an open source thing that the, uh, this is a prosthetic hand that is used. One in 30,000 babies are born without fingers and thumbs. And when they move their wrist forward, it clenches. So this is like uh, what you might have seen with Iron Man where Robert Downey gave to a, a student. We're now fabricating these. Uh, to at the forge and so we're trying to build the next generation of skilled technicians enable entrepreneurs enable other people to get the resources that they need to, in order to grow their businesses and we're trying to connect uh, uh, people with jobs and quite proud of the fact that uh, uh, we have seven patents filed over five companies and well over 30 to uh, I think it's in the upwards of 50 people have gotten jobs through the forge so um, I've been tr we've been trying to put together a series of events and trying to help stimulate some of the activity and, and, uh, and inspire people to, to do more and think more and make more than what they have in the past. So uh, it's, been a, it's been an honor to, to serve the Forge. On the 16th, we're going to destroy a car. We've got a Volvo that's uh, 2003. It does not run. We're going to smash a car. We're going to let people, we're going to have a Thor hammer, sledge hammers, all these different hammers, and people are going to pay us to turn that car into trash, and then we're going to let artists repurpose the car into various art projects, and it will be distributed uh, and sold at the National Folk Festival in September, and also probably at the 17 Days of Art here in Greensboro. What day is this event again? It will be July 16th at uh, probably starting around 5 o'clock and going until nine. We probably will have more than just that one day, but I know we're gonna have a mass day for that one. That, that's gonna be our big one, but uh, should be a lot of fun. And we're trying to raise $100,000 so we can move our facility into a larger space because we need, uh, with all the equipment that we're being offered now, we're needing uh, additional space and coverage in order to handle it. So, uh, so this is just one aspect we're trying to do to try to get uh, uh, more funding to cover our costs. Uh, they can enroll at foragegreensboro.org. They're welcome to come to the Forge at 115 West Lewis Street, and uh, we can sign them up here on the spot. And, uh, again, we've got people coming in 24-7. Uh, we've got a great relationship with the uh, area police department and fire department and area groups to help uh, uh, keep this place safe, and, and uh, we're trying to expand that. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.